James. James chapter 1, verse 1. A servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, I was shot to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. It says to the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad. Greetings. So when you see the churches, all these churches that we have on our streets today, they very seldom, if ever, speak on the twelve tribes who are scattered. Ever. They never speak on the twelve tribes of Israel. And so we have to understand, why are they not speaking on the twelve tribes of Israel? Why are they just saying that everybody can be saved? And not speaking about what the Bible says, right? From Genesis to Revelation. So that's the reason for us going over these scriptures. Go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, the house side, to the strangers uh -huh. scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Uh -huh. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. Stop. So he said the sprinkling of the blood of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, meaning they're sprinkling what? When the priests, when the priests were, uh, yeah, when it, when, speaking on the first covenant, the, the first priests were the Levites. And normally when you would commit a sin, the priest would take your offering, and after asking for forgiveness by the Most High, they would sprinkle blood on you. And it would be the blood of that animal in reference of combining his blood with your blood as being a, a sacrifice and asking for forgiveness of sins. And so now we use Hamashiach Yahushai for that forgiveness of sins through the sprinkling of his blood, which is forever, as long as we're in this captivity and uh, to the end, to the kingdom come. All right? So uh, keep going. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. All right. So he says, be, peace be multiplied. So we're speaking on the scattered. So this is saying the same thing James 1 and 1 is saying about the scattered. And the scattered are the twelve tribes of Israel. So the saints are the, are the children of Israel. When we read about the strangers, the strangers here are also the children of Israel. Because Brother Yahar did a class not too long ago on the strangers. And there's two types of strangers. There's the strangers of the Gentiles, and then there's the strangers of Israel. So in this particular chapter of First uh, Peter, Chapter 1, verse 1 down to 2 is talking about the strangers of Israel. Okay. Go ahead. It's the book of John, chapter 11, verse 50. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, that the whole nation perish not. Verse 51. And this he spake not of himself, but being high priest that, that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation and not. For, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in the children of God that were scattered abroad. All right, so the children of God are the Israelites. Those are the children of God. Those are the children of the Most High. Give me um, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and go to verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. All right, keep going. He found, um, he found him in a desert land. All right, so we're scattered to a desert land. The desert land is something other than our own land. This desert of information, deserted of our people, deserted of our culture. Go ahead. In a desert land and in the waste, howling wilderness. Uh -huh. He led him about. He led who about? The children of Israel. He led us about. Come on. He instructed him. Uh -huh. He kept him as the apple of his eye. The him is Israel. He kept us as the apple of his eye. Even today, we are the apple of his eye. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2. This is a precept. Acts, chapter 2. And let's read verse, um, verse 6. Acts, chapter 2, verse 6. Now when this... Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together 
and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Right. The multitude is Israel. Come on. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Uh -huh. And how, how hear ye we every man in our, lang our tongue, wherein we were born? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Path Pathians, Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and in Cappadocia, and in Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia. Right. So when you read this, it's telling you what we went over earlier, that there were some brothers and sisters who stayed back, who stayed in Babylon, who stayed with the Persians and the Medes, who stayed with the uh, uh, Assyrians. They never left. So that's why I'm saying that these people who are coming out these lands are coming out the lands of the Elamites. They're not Elam. They're not from that nation. They're just Israelites who dwelt with that nation. All right, come on. And the Medes and the Parthians, come on. Pergia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in, in the parts of Libya. These are our people. They were all scattered in Africa too. Come That's on. Right. About Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. So when it speaks about this particular verse, verse 10 is talking about Africa. Why don't the Christians link that with everything else that they see on TV? It was talking about we're in Europe too. Come on. Cretes and Arabians. We do not hear them speak in our oh, tongues. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Right, so he, they were sprinkled with the Hamashiach Yahushai, who are what? Children of the Most High. Who are what? Jump back up to verse 5. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation under heaven. So that's why we went over the, uh, the diaspora of the ten tribes. Very necessary, very necessary. So now what we're about to do, we're about to go into a Gentile book. And we're going to read page 356 of Lost Tribes and Promised Land. Go to page 356. Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by Ronald Sanders. 356. Yeah. And read uh, right where I got it. Yeah. Paragraph 2, page 356. One could not keep. Um, one. One could not keep one's own in perpetual servitude, neither according to the Old Testament nor to the English custom, but on the other hand, the Bible, Aristotle, but and current international law all allowed the enslavement of strangers. Stop. So now we're looking at a Gentile book, and these Gentiles are calling these people who are dwelling in these different lands strangers. So who are these strangers to? Are they strangers to the Israelites or are they strangers to the Gentiles? Read who these strangers are. Enslavement of strangers by now meant racial outsiders. That is to say, for Massachusetts in 1641, Negroes and Indians. Negroes and Indians were outsiders. So these were the Israelites, okay? They were outsiders to the Gentile nations, okay? So it's in reverse. So I'm bringing that out so you can see how they, how they label this. Page 364. Blessed be the, be the name of the Lord who has not made me an idolater, a barbarian, a Negro, an Indian, when suddenly be stopped. Those Indians, he told, him, he told himself, they are Hebrews. He said, wait a minute. You know, I don't want to be. I'm, I'm so happy I'm not a Negro. I'm so happy I'm not an Indian. Then he caught himself. He says, wait a minute. Those Indians, they are the what? They are Hebrews. They are Hebrews. Why was he saying that? Because he was in the land of South America. He said, wait a minute, man. What am I saying? They're the Hebrews. Paragraph 4. Waving a banner high in the air, the Indian guy soon was greeted by a puff of smoke far beyond the other bank of the river. In response to his signal, two men waited. Eventually, a canoe appeared bearing three men and a woman, all of them Indians. All of them Indians. Okay, come on. To the place where Francisco and Montezinos 
were standing at the water's edge. The woman got off and spoke to Francisco in an Indian tongue that Montezinos could not understand, although he could perceive that he was being identified in the conversation. So why was he calling them Indians? Because Indians meant savages. They were calling them savages. So they had a nationality, but they preferred to call them savages, just like they call us black. Now, do the Somalians call themselves black? No. Do the Ethiopians call themselves black? No. Why are we the only ones who call ourselves black? The slave master. The slave master city. Just like in this book, it says black and the Indians. Come on. She turned to her male companions to explain the situation. Upon hearing her words, they rose, went over to Montezinos, and to utter and to his utter astonishment said, Shema, Israel, Adonai, Adonai. Elohinu, Adonai, Ehud, meaning, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Like we said in the ancient Hebrew, Shema, Yasha'ala, Yahweh, Alanawa, Yahweh, Akut. That's the same thing. They were, they were reciting the ancient Hebrew. So what, where did they get that tongue from? So they wasn't just Indians. They were Israelites. Come on. They recited in Hebrew the fundamental credo of Judaism. A brief conversation. There's no such thing as Judaism to the average Israelite. There's only law, statutes, and commandments. So this is something that the uh, European race brought upon the Israelites. They, they came up with a new religion, taking our religion, or taking our law, statutes, and commandments, and converting to being Jewish. Okay, come on. A brief conversation then ensued in their common ancestral tongue. According to Montezinos, who's, who's fluently in it almost as perplexing to the reader of his narrative as it is of his three mysterious new companions. Mm -hmm. They told him mysterious new companions, come on. They told him that they were themselves the tribe of Reuben and that the tribe of Joseph lived on an island nearby. So he says, wait a minute. He says, we are from the tribe of Reuben. They knew who they was. They wasn't Indians. He said, we're from the tribe of Reuben. And the tribe of Joseph was on an island nearby. Now, when you talk about Joseph, how many tribes is that in itself? There's two tribes. Remember, Joseph had two sons, ben, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. Keep reading. The day when they were at last to issue forth into the world was coming soon. They explained, but in the meantime, they could not allow visitors to cross over to them. They were willing to make an exception in the near future, however, on account of their need for education. Mm -hmm. Okay, now read over here, page 365. Page 365. The God of the children of Israel is now, this the true... Is, this is the, the Gentile stranger that's talking about the blacks and the Indians. It's talking about the Israelites. He's talking about what they had on their tablets. Come on. In quotes, the God of these children of Israel is the true God. They had said, and everything inscribed on their tablets is true. What tablets? What tablets is that? It's got to be the commandments, and it's got to be what? Tablets of the book. The tablets that they found throughout North America. Yeah, the tablets that they now have found in North America that's in the Smithsonian. Okay, come on. At the, end of, at the end of days, they will be lords of, of all nations of the earth. Mm -hmm. One nation will come bringing many things to this land. And after we have all been provided for, these children of Israel will go forth from where they now are and reign over the whole earth. And reign over the whole earth. So what are we getting ready for? They knew that this is prophecy to come. That's, That's right. why they trying to start up all this confusion. That's a form of they, new rulership. They knew, this. they knew this. That's why you don't hear anyone talking about 12 tribes in any of these churches. Because if they speak on it, then it have, the prophecy has to come forth. The children of Israel have to wake up, and rulership of the world right. is destined for the Israelites based on the Father in Heaven, not on man. The Father in Heaven promised that in this book, the Bible. So there's nothing to get angry about. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. We didn't write it. 
Yeah, we didn't write any of these books. We just bring down resources. Give me rivers of gold. And we're going to go to rivers of gold and say our author, who the author is. The book Rivers of Gold by Hugh Thomas. Right. Okay. So we're going to go to page 93. Page 93 and go to the highlight section I highlighted in there. Okay. Page 93. Remember what he said. Reuben was on an island nearby, and Joseph was on an island nearby. Ephraim and who? Manasseh. So we're going to read a little bit more. Read that. Paragraph 4. Uh -huh. These indigenous people of the Bahamas were later destroyed by contact with the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. They were closely related to Tainos, whom Columbus would soon meet in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So these, these indigenous brothers got destroyed. So did they completely get destroyed? Remember what the scripture says. Give me Hosea 4 and 6. There's two types of destroyed. There's one where you absolutely just killed off. The second one is what? No Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So the destroying can also be your mind. Those who didn't bow down to their cross, to their God, got killed. Those who remained were those who did bow down and worship their God. Okay? So when they say decimated, yeah, they may have killed off everybody but the children that wanted to believe them or go into captivity. All right? So you can, you can drop that. Is there, yeah, read some more. Read some more. Read some more. Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will I also reject thee, that thou be should be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So he says, I will forget thy children. How is thy children forgotten? Slavery. Slavery. Learning another doctrine, a whole new education system. Education strip. I mean heritage strip. Right. Karl yeah. Marx introduced that whole thing. If you read up on the, uh, the European man Karl Marx, give me um, uh, give me another book. Let's go to another. So I'm bringing out a lot of books right now because I just need you to see the resources that we have. And I didn't bring all my best books, just so you know. I just bought the ones that I could go into real quick for a quick reference for time's sake. And you said to the Bahamas so that further proves that they're on, you know, on the island. On the island. Right, just like you said. <laughs> yeah. All right, give me Black Indians. Because it said in the scripture, in the Isles of the Sea. Right. So we're going to go into another book, and it's called The Black, Black Indians. Indians. And the author is... By William Lawrence Katz. Uh -huh. Lauren Katz. As you can see on the front of this cover, who do you see? This is a picture of the Native Americans and the tribe of Judah, what they call today a so-called Negro or African American. So you got Gad, the tribe of Gad, and Reuben. I mean... Or he could be Reuben, you know, similar yeah, yeah. We don't know. But we will look at him today by eyesight. We will say he's Jew. By eyesight. All right? Come on. Page um, 36. Page 36, paragraph 1. Your Majesty, the time is coming when these African people will become masters of the Indians. And so much as they were born among them and their maidens, and are men who dare, I mean, dare to die as well as any Spaniard in the world. So the Negroes and the what? The American Indians joined hand in hand. And when he said that they would master them, is because all have to come through the what? The waters of Judah. And it's just, it's just epic when you see a, a, a lighter version of a tribe get with another tribe. And they have children, it's going to be darker. Yeah, they would master them by genealogy. You know what I mean? So when we look at that, they call the brothers African. So I want to show you now how this is a flaw by calling them Africans. Because first thing the so-called white man or any other nation in America, when they see a so-called black man, they say, oh, you from Africa. I got, I got something else right here that you did not like. Okay. Uh, go ahead. It says on page 37, 
As early as 1523, Hernando, Hernan, Hernando Cortez was given a royal order to keep the Indians in their village villages apart from the Africans at all costs. This was only seven years after Venice, Italy isolated its Jews in the first ghetto in history. Ooh, that's heavy right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, I mean, there's all kinds of little goodies in these books that I got here. So, I, like I said, I can't go through everything. All I can do is touch and move. So, let's, let's look up another goodie. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's see if they were really Africans, first right. and foremost. Because people like to call us African Americans all the time. A lot of you brothers and sisters today go by that. You, you don't like the name Negro anymore. You say Negro and people get mad. When we say African American, that's okay for, you, for us to call you African American. But let us call, call you Negro, which is on your birth certificate or your parents' birth certificate, y'all get mad. Okay? So let's see if we were really Negro or African American. So let's go to the Bible's honor and dictionary. Zondervan Bible Compact Dictionary, mm -hmm. Compact Bible Dictionary. And I want to walk through this again. We may have been in this book already, but I gotta, I gotta go right back so I can trigger your mind again and again and again. So let's go to uh, Compact Bible Dictionary and go to Ham first. A lot of you brothers probably say, "Man, they always going to that, <laughs> always bringing our Ham. We tired of hearing that." Well, you gotta hear it again because it's gonna make sense when we go to the next thing. Bible's out of it, and we're going to go to the definition of Ham. Page 213, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, probably born about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. As we had shown you in the beginning of this class, the different photographs of many different nations. Ham, we showed you the Ethiopians, we showed you the Egyptians, we even showed you Shemitic man, Elam. We showed you how dark Elam was. Mm -hmm. So all the nations of the earth were dark-skinned people, but Ham was by far the darkest. So calling each other dark wasn't a thing. That wasn't, that a wasn't thing. even a thing. Right. So mm -hmm. go ahead. But the not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. We're not a part of this equation called Ham. Come on. But the Egyptians, Ethiopians. Libyans and Canaanites. Right, so all of those people that he mentioned, Ham was their grandfather, which meant they came from the stock of Ham. Okay, so now the brother brought that out. Let's find out who the Hebrews came after. Go to the, go to the same book, Zondervan Bible Dictionary, and bring, bring out Ruddy. Go to Ruddy. <laughs> because a lot of y'all say, well, you guys are making that up. Well, this is a so-called Gentile scholar. If we're making this up, then he's making it up, mm -hmm. okay? And he was supposed to be from one of your quote-unquote best schools in the USA. Ruddy. Definition of ruddy, page 510. Because many people call King David ruddy because he was so-called, they say he was red. And so he resembles a so-called white man, gets red when he laughs, when he drinks, when he smiles, when he hangs out on the beach, he gets red. But let's see what type of red this is consisting of. Let's see this. Because even your so-called, the people that you call Negroes have tints of red in them, but not as profound as the so-called white man, which is translucent. Definition of ready on page 510. A word used to refer to a red or fair complexion in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. In contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. So that's telling you right there that the Hebrews were dark people. Okay, and all the Hebrews came out of who? Abraham. Can we get that in Genesis 15 to 13? Is it 13 or 15 or 15 to 13? Might be 15 and 13. I thought it was 13 and Genesis 14 and 13. 14 and 13? Okay. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 14 and 13 and see what they call Abraham. Genesis chapter 14, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, uh -huh. for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and the brother of Aner. And these were confederate with Abraham. So Abram, 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 which later became known as Abraham, was a Hebrew. Okay? 
So you should highlight that in your Bible if you have it. Abraham the Hebrew. So it's telling you that they were dark-skinned people. Okay? And when you look at uh, so-called black people, they range in the various shades of color, from dark, dark black to real, real light. You know? So you have real, real light skin. And you can see that tint of red in so-called black people, or Negro, well, who they call Negroes today. Okay? So from there, I want to go into this book. This book is called, I have the books read it. Crania I Egypt Egypt Egyptiaca. Hey, good luck on finding Egyptiaca. Egyptiaca. Right. So I'm looking at all these different places for these books. Y'all don't understand the work that I've done just to gather these books. By who? Uh, oh, Samuel Sam. George Morton. Okay. Let's go to page 18. Go to it one page. Okay. And let's read the highlighted version. Highlighted version. The strangers are the Phoenicians and the Greeks. Uh -huh. So, in this particular case, it's talking about the Hebrews. Who are the strangers to the Hebrews? The Phoenicians and the Greeks. So he's dropping down to another paragraph. Right. It has been supposed. Wait a minute. So back it up a little bit. So as we read in the Gentile book, who did they call the strangers? The blacks and the blacks Indians. And the Indians. They didn't want to tell you their real name, but as you read that page further down, it said tribe of Reuben, tribe of Joseph, right? But they didn't want to give up the real names. So we're going to drop down to the next paragraph. I want you to read that. It has been supposed by learned authorities that Africa was peopled by Negroes before the Humidic tribes entered that country. That Humidic is Hemetic. Hemetic, right? Come on. I so there were people before the Hermetic tribes started scattering in Africa. So we went to West Africa first. They were all pl plowed up around Egypt, Ethiopia. They, they didn't go no farther than Everybody wanted, y'all got to understand, everybody wanted Mesopotamia. They all wanted that area. That was the table of birth. What do we read in Galatians chapter 4 and... Um, 26. Yeah, what does it say? But Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the mother of us all. All of us come from Jerusalem. So even the other nations, they want it. What do you think they're fighting over today? Over that same plot, that same land. The Greeks came and took over that land. That's one of the prime real estates. Of yeah, the prime real estate of the earth. earth. That is the most prime real estate in the world. No that area, Mesopotamia area, right around the Mediterranean. That's why I said that Africa was not peopled by the Hermetic race because they had the Red Sea. They was all around that area. Okay, continue to read again. I do not suppose Ham to have been the progenitor of the Negro race. So let's tell you again, Ham couldn't have been the progenitor of the Negro race. So that's backing up not only Zondervan Bible Dictionary, but every other book we done brought out about the so-called Negroes, that they're not from the nation of Ham. And the Bible itself. And the Bible itself. <laughs> so who are they from? <laughs> Shem. That's why they said black or Indian and lost pride in the promised land. They ain't want to tell you who they were. And it's their job to know all this and look this up. It's right. their job, their study, you know what I'm saying? That's they try right. to get paid. So how they get paid. They, they know more than the, the average Negro on YouTube. You the the biggest threat was blacks and Indians in the whole earth. The biggest threat because they are the Israelites who the world belongs to. Come on. And with Dr. Wiseman, Mr. Lawrence, and many others, I regard as a conjecture in science, oh yeah, in science that doctrine would attribute the physical gradations between the white man and the Negro or to any other natural process than of the direct amalgam amalgamation. Right, so the amalgamation means the joining of the two. So they're saying, wait a minute, we, we took the, I got another book that talks about the skulls of the Negro versus the Egyptians. And it says the Negroes didn't have the same skulls as the Egyptians. Right. Now here we got another doctor, along with other doctors, are saying that, okay, they don't fit the Hermetic race, and their skulls are not like the Hermetic people, but their skulls are so much like ours. They're so much like so-called white men. Why? Why is it so much like the so-called white men? Give me Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. We'll show you why it's so much like the so-called white men. This is why. 
Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was Esau, was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? That's our twin. The so-called white man is our twin brother. But he's not an he's not Israelite. He is a Hebrew, but he's not an Israelite. Okay, come on. Saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob. Mm -hmm. And I hated Esau. And I hated Esau. Why did the Most High hate Esau? Because he gave up his birthright. And he's chastised Jacob his whole entire life. So he's telling you right there who the brother is. That's why he said there's got to be something different about these Negroes. Their brains, their skulls look so much like ours. We, they're the left hand side of us. We look on the polar scale. They're on the negative side. We're on the positive side. All right? Go back to this. Egypt may perhaps be regarded as an intellectual center of the posterity of Ham. Right, so it's telling you again where Ham is. Egypt, that's the main place where the Hamitic people are, in Egypt. So they moved them out of the way too. Now Ham has been pushed down into the southern regions of Africa. <laughs> because the Arabs have come and take over that land. Okay? So we got to understand that too. It was a scattering of the other nations as well. This is all part of prophecy. Um, let's go to the book of Exodus. Let's get a little more. Look at Exodus chapter 1, and let's go to verse 1. Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. Now came, now, now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Stop right there. So what this is doing is giving you a breakdown of who these tribes like to hang out with. Right? It's just like I said earlier, when uh, the diaspora occurred, there were certain tribes that liked to hang out with other tribes. And so what we're about to read is how they got down. This is how the tribes stuck together. This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them and they shall dwell in their own land. Thank you. 